How many of you know the history behind the Children's Rights Movement? My name is Maria Moran and I am a current nutritional science student at Texas Columbus University. And I am here to inform you about the history, accomplishments, and current impacts that children have experienced. Most of the events that I will be talking about today took place in the 20th century, inspired by a very courageous man, followed by a series of events after the creation of the United Nations. Moreover, the Catholic Church also touches great importance as an entity for children and their rights. Finally, I will be pointing out some of the areas that affect children's psychological and physical well-being, including the current global crisis. So, as I mentioned before, not everyone knows the beginnings of this movement, neither the reasons that we are still fighting every day. The history begins, the history behind this movement is very sad because children were suffering from forced labor, desertion, or abandonment. But at the same time, very beautiful because there was a light at the end of the tunnel for the children. The story begins during the 20th century, in 1919, as a small movement. But five years later, it was adopted by the Geneva Declaration and thus becoming the first international treaty on children's rights. Indeed, all of his hard work was inspired by a very courageous man, who was Janusz Korsza. He was a Polish Jewish educator, children's author, and pedagogue. But he is also very well known for his humanitarian work fighting for children's rights and well-being. Indeed, he is considered the father of children's rights. After 1945, children's future seemed a little bit bright and came to the creation of the United Nations and the involvement of the Catholic Church in 2004. The creation of the United Nations promoted human rights, among them, children's rights, which took place through a series of events, which I'm only going to highlight the most relevant ones. It's starting by the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, by giving motherhood and children value in society. Also, in 1959, the United Nations adopted the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, which recognized the child as a subject of rights. Finally, 1979, known as the Year of the Child, marked the growing application of children's rights internationally. Moreover, the involvement of the Catholic Church in 2004 called for children's protection and dignity. It was written in the Compendium of the Social Doctrine of the Church, established by Pope John Paul II. The doctrine sustains that the family must provide a special attention to children by developing a profound esteem for their dignity, great respect for the self, and generous concern for their rights. Also, the Catholic Church called out that the rights of children must be legally defended through a global judicial system. Today, children have been experiencing new challenges because of the past and current economical and health situations. But some of the challenges that I'm going to mention are the transformation of the family structure, globalization, climate change, digitalization, mass migration, and shift in employment patterns. Uh, these are the challenges that uh, have affected children among the years. But ultimately, the current global crisis has impacted children both physically and emotionally due to high levels of stress, which periodically results in increased cleaning cleanliness, cheerfulness, nightmares, or temper tantrums in young children. Older children are also affected by experiencing changes in sleep or appetite, reduced air energy, and other physical symptoms. Finally, both older and younger children's cognitive abilities are being affected as well, resulting in forgetfulness and destruction. In conclusion, I have talked today about the children's rights movement, its beginnings, accomplishments, and current impacts starting by the creation of the United Nations, from which I have highlighted only the most re relevant events of work. I, ha I have also mentioned the involvement of the Catholic Church in 2004 as an entity who advocates for children's dignity and value. Finally, I talked about the different challenges such as political and social issues that affect children, but also how children's psychological and psychological well-being are being affected by the global pandemic. We must always remember that children are people, individuals able to decide for them. They do not belong to their parents or their state, they are human beings. As Estasia Kalcher, a dancer and artist said, we worry about what a child will become tomorrow, yet we forget that he is someone today. Thank you very much.